Everybody and welcome to your baka 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 sura guide. We're gonna be starting off. You can go Boomba's Dagger or Eye of the Jungle. Honestly, either of them are gonna work. On Baka, I'm gonna get the Eye of the Jungle just for some of that bonus attack speed. But genuinely, Boomba's Dagger and Boomba's Spear are so good that like, if you're not comfortable in the jungle, it's also the generically better sustain option and you can just grab it universally on junglers so just keep that in mind but on baka the eye of the jungle a little bit more targeted towards his kit most importantly we're going to be grabbing the golden blade asap i'm also going to get myself a couple of health pots multi pots and a blink and you should be grabbing yourself of course a sub to the youtube channel by smashing that sub button and making sure that you're liking and commenting on the videos to help out with the algorithm gods now, Bakasura, we are going to get our one at level one. A lot of people, when they play Baka for the first couple of times, they tend to get their eat minion because they're like, yeah, I'm just going to eat the big minion and all things are going to be great. And it's going to clear so fast. But in actuality, the flat 100 damage that you get from your jump is way more efficient at clearing, especially because these first spawns are uh, very easy to kill. You basically full wipe the whole thing like you can see we just did right there not to mention it helps you jump onto the archers in the mid lane and try to clear those faster as well or you can use it generically as your escape if you need to if you're in trouble real early so it's kind of a wins all around type of situation now they've got a wukong loki mid so i gotta be a little careful here i'm actually just gonna hop down on these melees because i don't want to go too deep on this because they're definitely gonna out clear us so i want to make sure that i'm in a safe position for them to go do any of this nonsense that they're gonna do i am gonna grab my eat here at level two see if i can't move towards them back here it's gonna go for the eat right there on the minion Gonna be able to grab that, pop a couple of potions, and then run away from that situation, securing some of that farm for ourselves. Now I'm trying to put myself back into the range of these minions so I can get credit for them. That's actually a lot of damage taken right there by the Loki. I'm gonna jump in towards Loki, get an auto tag on him. Not gonna be enough to kill him, but should make him think twice. Oh my god goodness this wukong do be swinging though let me tell you red buff mid lane wukong does he have a ranga now he's got a blue sun that man is not to be trifled with and then at level three we will grab our three and our official level order on bakasura for maxing is going to be four three two one bakasura one of those characters where you grab a point in your one early but then we are not going to be maxing out that ability. We're going to max it out last. Ready. Reason why we level up our ulti is because we are going to get cooldown reduction on it. It's going to get like 20 seconds, I think, or so off of the cooldown by the time we level it up, which is a very big deal, uh, especially for Baka because his ganks are like 90% reliant on him having his ulti up. Then we max out our three because that's just going to give us good old flat damage and everything that we do. Our two so is going to give us a little bit more sustain. And then our one because half the time we're going to be using it for getting away anyway. So we don't necessarily need it to do more damage. Although you should keep in mind that your jump on Baka does increase the damage that your target takes by 10 percent so if you can use it aggressively extra 10 percent damage is 10 percent damage that's no joke but if you jump in of course you best be getting those kills best have your ulti up some or the other form of escape so keep that in mind but a lot of people forget that it does have that bonus damage effect on it as far as Bakasura's time to shine, he is one of the worst early game fighters in the game. Uh, absolutely atrocious. At early game fights, his level one, two fight, um, anything pre-level five is really horrible. His ganks pre-level five are horrible. 
Uh, not the god that you're running around for. Looking for those very aggressive early game plays. He's basically the opposite of Thanatos, who was just WQing full blast at level one. Baka infinitely more concerned with getting farm throughout the early game. Particularly once you get your golden blade online, that's when you're gonna start noticing that Bakasura can actually play the game. I'm gonna come over here and clear these last couple of camps before I back up. You almost always wanna back immediately as soon as you can get your golden blade. The faster you can back and get that golden blade, the better, but also all this XP is spawning at this exact moment. I don't necessarily need the golden blade to clear these camps anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. So when does Bakasura start to thrive? Right around level nine. Right around level nine on Bakasura is when you start to get more involved. So if you have a Bakasura on your team, note to self, you're not getting early game ganks. It's not gonna happen. That's not what Baka is good at. Baka is good at out farming the enemy jungle usually with the use of golden blade and also invading the enemy's jungles camps you can typically put a lot of pressure on enemy jungle camps run in eat a quick creep run away run in eat a quick creep run away so your goal as baka is to be trying to maintain an experience lead if you are behind an experience on baka then there is no point to play him you should always be even or higher on Bakasura. That is really the end goal with him. Also, if you buy wards on Baka, you should be buying wards in every roll. You can place them aggressively like I have over towards the red buff. Aggressive placement of those wards means you're going to be able to see more respawn timers. Going to throw down an ulti on this Wukong because I do think I can force him to use his ultimate. I can. Just gonna take that as a win for my mid laner. And then head right back into the old jingle jangle. Second my ultimate is down, the team fight is over. What does that mean for our matchups on Baga? That means as far as the enemy team is concerned, Depending on who they're running is gonna affect how you are going to play through him. If you are going against a Thanatos, an Arachne, somebody that's gonna be able to go for those early game fights, you have to just put your head down and farm your brains out because you, there, there's nothing you can do. You can't win the early fight. You're, you're not gonna beat them ever. You're just gonna lose. And if you lose that fight, now all of a sudden you're a level or two behind on a Bakasura and the enemy jungler is snowballing out of control. So put your head down and farm as much fun as it would be to gank on Baka all the time. You simply can't do it until later in the game, particularly once we get our hastened Fatalis online. I can't exactly call that anymore, but you know what I'm saying. Once we get that online, our ganks become like 10 times more efficient. So we get that golden blade first, then we're working on the good old hastened. Once we get that hastened done, then we can actually keep up with the people that we're ganking. And we're gonna get way better value out of our ganks. Also on Baka, if your ultimate is down, you're basically not ganking. Once your ulti is up, you can look for ganks. If your ulti is down, you're pretty much not ganking. So you gotta be careful against that. As far as pairings on your team, Bakasura is just gonna add generic DPS with the team. So he can basically be paired with anybody. Not gonna have a big like mid jungle combination here. Um, Bakasura doesn't provide nor need any setup. So there's no real value there. The one thing that can be nice for a Bakasura is a little bit of extra help from the support. He is a dive based character, often gonna blink ulti into the back line, like so. And because of that, if you can get him paired with a god like a Geb, a Kepri, etc., something that can help provide him some defensive value. Bakasura will appreciate that. 
plays out just like a Mercury, a Kali, etc., where they need to dive into the back line. And so anybody that can help keep them alive will be beneficial. But they don't need like the Geb ulti, like doesn't really help out the Baka, sir. All right, the Geb shield helps out the Baka. For positioning on Baka, you're basically just waiting for an opportunity to gank the back line. Later on in the game, particularly if you do opt to get a Kins in your build, you are a, a tank shredder as well. But your main goal is almost always going to be to dive into the back line, particularly the hunter mage in jungle, whoever is their most problematic character. This game right now, their mid laner is a Wukong, which is uh, kind of throwing that strategy for a loop, but it does mean that I'm gonna be able to put more priority on to the Loki jungle, as well as the Apollo in duo. So when you're looking for those late game team fights, you're gonna typically want somebody on your team to initiate first. You don't wanna be the first person into the fight as Baka. If you're the first person into the fight, they're gonna be able to turn on you, kill you very quickly. But the second after you get your team's initiation, whether that's gonna be for us, the Agni bomb stun coming down, whether that's a Kabrakan blink ult, any of those will provide just enough a hoopla for me to kind of sneak in behind them. Now, I'm going to wait for Geb here to go for his rollout. If he goes for his rollout, I can go for my ulti. That's going to cripple him, take him out of his rollout. And then we should be able to go ahead and wrap up that kill on him. And then I'm going to continue running around their jungle, looking to counter jungle. Baka, really the probably single most premier counter jungle in the game so always take the opportunity to run through their jungle and take it away after the first couple of levels if you have the opportunity to and maybe take a quick wave away from your turnabog because it's tuna and you just want to meme him a little bit but if it's not tuna then you probably shouldn't do that to your duo like hunter your team is Please go for it all right, now we're going to back up. Going to get ourselves that hasten, go to clear the right-hand side, get ourselves our beats, and we're going to start working on Executioner. Probably should have honestly bought a couple of wards there as well, but I did it. Executioner might be... It might be the best item of Smite right now. It's really, really up there uh, for any auto attacker. It's great on Hunters. It's great on auto attack based assassins. It's just damn good. So make sure you buy it on Bakasura and you are gonna choose that left hand side glyph upgrade. That is what makes it so strong. You basically get percentage flat increased damage on all of your auto attacks for all intents and purposes. And on Bakasura, as we mentioned earlier, if we jump in on the target, we get 10% more damage. And if we have the Executioner, we're getting percent more damage, which means we're getting percent more damage on top of our percent more damage and more percent is good i probably dead here oh 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 i couldn't get the blink off over the wall no game knock ups no whammies no whammies and stop at no whammies uh, this is me getting Operation Greedy because the Apollo can 100% ulti in on me. It's actually not going to be an Apollo ulting in on me. It is going to be an RDO around the back. How can I be so right and so wrong at the same time? Back to the green buff. Bakasura, also the premier greedy farmer. Because you can eat and get so much HP back. Plus, you're always going to have a golden blade. Farm, 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 farm. So the general idea with the build here on Baka is attack speed plus movement speed. That's what you're looking for. Stone cutting sword recently got nerfed. So did Golden Blade. To be fair, it only gives seven percent movement speed instead of ten. Golden Blade still one of the best items in the game. 
Uh, stone cutting, on the other hand, got nerfed so hard that I don't necessarily recommend it anymore, uh, which is unfortunate because it was a fun item, but it did get nerfed uh, kind of into the ground on the passive, so I would simply recommend sticking away from it, grab that executioner as that third slot instead of the stone cutting sword, which is a good chance you were buying that beforehand in that slot. But items that give attack speed to movement speed, all going to be fairly viable. On Bakasura, um, Kind is a great option in the later stages of the game. You don't really need lifesteal on Baka, um, so I would stick away from like the Aussie and stuff. A big reason why lifesteal on Baka is so schmeh is because a huge part of his kit is using your ulti, which makes your autos AoE, and AoE autos plus lifesteal and smite have a reduced effect, and it doesn't end up usually being that efficient. So I'm not really looking for lifesteal on Baka. You'll get plenty of sustain out of your devour. So you shouldn't need any more than that gonna run over here towards the mid lane i don't want to use my jump i want to keep that up in case i need to get out of the fight so what i'm gonna do here is i'm gonna just wait for a little bit of an opportunity i'm gonna come in the back i'm gonna quickly kill a couple of creeps now i can jump to try to chase the apollo the reason why i kill a couple of creeps right there is i immediately stack up my passive trying to look for a jungle camp to clear somewhere and nothing to clear so i can just kind of walk back towards mid lane Gonna jump over the end of that RDO root duration, and I might be able to chase this RDO down. She's gonna dash away, so I'm not gonna be able to get the kill there. But when you kill those creeps, the first three that you kill on Baka give you a massive. Ooh, speaking of massive, massive mid lane Wukong, they give you a massive buff because of your passive attack speed plus movement speed. Not only will it help you catch up to your target, it'll help you kill them faster when you do. So you always want to try to have those three stacks up on Baka. That's a little bit of a Baka mini game that you have to play, but it's worth it. So if you need to quickly shift and grab like one auto attack onto the wave with your cone autos in order to quickly clear the whole wave, get three stacks. Super efficient for Baka, especially when you go for the chase. Now that we've got the first executioner online, this is where the build starts to open up a little bit. Against their team, I don't really need anything in particular. You can go crit on Bakasura, um, especially if they have a very squishy team. It's not necessarily um, an every game kind of build on Bakasura, but if you find the right opportunity to do like a Wind Demon Deathbringer, which will give you a solid amount of crit, plus you get the bonus movement speed and stuff from the Wind Demon, you can actually make the life of the enemy hunter in particular really really bad you throw down all those minions all those minions to body blocking the hunters crit autos you're critting them back not very fun to play against if you've ever had to do it if they're running a tankier comp they've got a wukong geb and rdo this game just gonna go a more standard kind of build right here and i'm gonna get myself the executioner into that kids so a little method right there for Bakasura that you just got to see me use. Throw down your ultimate in the tower range before you are in it. That will cause the tower to aggro onto your minions out of your mouth and save you from having to tank the tower. Same kind of strategies work with basically all pet characters, Nuwa, Arachne, etc. Let your pet go in and tank at least a shot or two for you, which gives you more leeway to continue to dive and push for that kill under tower. Gonna try to jump in front of this gap for the body block. Not quite gonna be able to get it. Wow, kind of looked like he phased through me, honestly, but a great Kabrakan follow up, and we should be able to pick up this kill onto the Geb, and then I will immediately go back to, you guessed it, more farming. Got a six level lead right now over their Loki. 
six level lead is a bit excessive uh we're kind of winning in every lane but on bakasura not uncommon to get well we just had a lot of people die and we buy some tumor crazy not uncommon to have a three four five level lead on bakasura his farming really is that much better than everybody else throw down the ulti right after the blink good stun right there from the rdo but i'm gonna keep this pressure on apollo pop a quick eat on that minion for a little bit of mo movement speed plus the heal and that should let me chase down to the rdo without too many problems after that gonna throw down a sentry ward over here on the gold call for the attack the gold theory as well and between me and the turn bug we should be pretty fine not gonna get any defensive items on baka on a lot of the ability based junglers you'll get like a last item mantle of discord or something baka sura you're pretty much full committing to the damage not gonna finish my kins right now because i can back up get a protector of the jungle seer of the jungle also really good both of those items viable seer of the jungle gonna let you counter those wards but we have such a big lead right now that I honestly don't think they're spending too much money on wards. They probably have to save all of the money right now uh, in order to get items, which means that I can get away with going a much more just raw damage item and just have even stronger fights off of the jump. Keep pressure on their own jungle. Keep pressure on the Loki. Don't let it get away with anything for free. And keep that XP and gold deficit for as long as we can. Ardeo's gonna stun me right away. She sure did. I do actually want to go in on this. They've got all five there. But we've got such a nice lead. And it's only the tier one tower right there. We can dive that tier one literally whenever we want to. And let me tell you, I want to. So I'm going to go clear this mid wave. Uh, the Fuego's a little aggressive. If we have somebody keep them zoned out. Honestly, I'm going to stay over mid. And I'm just going to kind of zone them out. They could start that fire giant without me. They have absolutely no idea right now. Because they're like, well, they wouldn't do a fire giant without their Bakasura, right? Now they're starting to get the idea, though. They're starting to rotate over. Apollo's going to be by himself over at mid. I'm going to be looking for this Wukong. Go down an ulti right on him for the cripple. Not going to be able to reach him before he gets the ulti up. Going to have to pop a little bead right there to turn on to the Loki. Going to see if I can not jump on him with the last auto. I sure can. Running back over towards the jungle. I'm going to eat a quick creep for the heal. Knock out another wave to make sure I got my passive all stacked up. And now I can head back towards the fuego with the team apollo is gonna just do a little dash right into me but he uses mez and dies it just a quick lunch don't be afraid to walk away on baka and eat a quick camp in order to get a little bit of a heal and you pass it back up Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Bogusur's Phoenix fight is okay. He doesn't have the best Phoenix fight in the world, but he also doesn't have the worst Phoenix fight. I'm going to give myself a Silver Branch. This entire build is basically attack speed incarnate, so that Silver Branch is going to give me a lot of value. Plus, I'm going to get that flat percentage pen, which is also going to help against the objectives because the Executioner doesn't actually help against those. So I'll get the value against these towers and phoenixes with that Silver Branch to try to help me take them down a little bit faster compared to the Executioner, which helps more against players and Gold Fury, Fire Giant, etc. Don't get those passive frogs on the... the on them stationaries. All right, 
Let's take down these last couple of towers. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 I wanna dive into the back. I'm gonna eat this up so I can get my movement speed up. Do a couple of nom noms, try to jump out of the tower range over the Geb. Put a little sentry ward out, run into the jungle, see if I can find a creep. I cannot, so I'm gonna run back toward the team. Hope that a wave comes down for your boy. Gotta jump away from that Wukong, cause he is problematic. Freshen up that speed buff. Come back in to help out with the tower. I do gotta be careful though. This Wukong is hitting very hard. So I gotta still find me a little bit of a camp to do some nom noms on. There we go. That's a 500 HP heal. The fight honestly went well for their team. The fact that we haven't even gotten the tier two is not great. This Wukong is looking directly at me. Great play, though, from that. Kabraken gonna let us grab that kill. Couple creeps right there off the wave. Gonna be able to pick those up. And now we should be able to get a Phoenix. I have got my ulti coming back up in four seconds. I can use those to tank if I need to. I'm also actually gonna call for attacking the left Phoenix. Because I can summon a couple creeps over there. Oh, I was going to have those creeps tank for us. But it looks like our Shiva dashed in the tank anyway. Either way, going to be able to grab this left Phoenix. And then we should go back and we should just go do the old Golden Fury. Don't throw our lead. And then we can back up, shove up the tower in right lane. And get ready for the next Fuego. I actually can't solo this gold fury. It will definitely kill me. But it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> gold fury channel attack. OP. OP. One thing you do have to be careful about on Bakasura on his uh on his E minion. The ability is kind of buggy. Um so just be aware that like if you're trying to run past a minion really fast and try to get a quick eat off like 25 percent of the time it bugs out it'll play the full sound animation you'll play like through the like the physical animation and you'll play the whole sound but sometimes when you're particularly on lane minions when you're just like walking by really fast it just like the game doesn't register that you really wanted to eat the minion. It's like, are you sure you wanted to eat that minion? Uh, and you don't get the HP and you don't get the passive buff and it can for sure get you killed. So just be aware that it can happen. And if you play more Bakasura, you'll start to like find the situations where you're like, oh, if I try to run right past right here, it's just not gonna work. The ability just straight up won't work. <laughs> so keep that in mind. Also on Bakasura, uh, one thing that people don't know is he gets true damage on his Butcher Blades. You passively get physical power, but when you activate the ability, you get this true damage. True damage in Smite is not like true damage in other video games. This does not mean it goes through all of their defenses and you get a bonus 70 flat damage no matter what. In Smite, what it means is it goes through their protections. It does not mean that it goes through mitigations. So if they have mitigations, they will still be able to counter some of that damage. So gods like the enemy hunters and mages, you don't have to worry about this on, but on like the supports and solo laners, if they've got spirit robes, oni hunters, if they're a Bacchus, whatever, they can still mitigate some of that damage. Another Patriot has fallen. So do keep that in mind. True damage goes through protections, but not mitigation. Is how that works. Hey, 
guess I should make sure they don't get that Phoenix tile. You don't think, right? I should probably have backed here. I really wanted my speed buff. Yeah, he's not going for it. All right. I want a 3K pot. That's what I want. Give me a nice thick Baka Sura 3K pot as we shove down the mid and dual lanes. Mmm. For Golden Blade, a lot of people have gotten in the habit of selling Golden Blade in the ultra late game. I would not, for the most part, sell your Golden Blade, even with the minus 3% movement speed uh, nerf that they gave to it previously. It is still statistically one of the best items in the game. Power, attack speed, movement speed, plus the AoE autos. And on Bakasura, the AoE autos are, it's kind of a meme, but also kind of OP because Baka can make his autos AoE. You can get AoE Golden Blade procs. So if you're auto attacking like three enemy gods within your cone, and then you get the Golden Blade proc on everybody, it's a lot of bonus damage. It's kind of a meme, but it's also kind of OP in the right situation. Baka loves him, a grouped up enemy. All right, they should not really be able to defend these phoenixes. Woo! The game wasn't exactly sure what to do there with me. Okay. I'm actually just going to run over. I'm going to eat these creeps really quick. Here's another fun use for Baka Sura ult. Nice little split push action. Just going to come over here. Kill that phoenix, no problemo. Before I head back in towards this RDO, who I'm just going to be doing so much damage to. Pop a quick feed. She's going to go down. We're chasing a Wukong. He's going to go down, and we're going to be able to put this team away. So, Bakasura, put your head down early in farm. You are a crappy early game god, so do not try to abuse any early game fights you're just gonna lose your team is gonna yell at you for the first 10 minutes of the game because you are gonna be farming your jungle and the enemy jungle and you're not gonna be ganking but you're not ganking because your ganks wouldn't be very good anyway until you're at least like that level nine then you can start ganking more freely, particularly once you get into those team fights. That's when Bakasura starts to thrive. A lot of damage, a lot of split push potential, a lot of objective damage, a lot of damage overall, guys. And that, of course, is going to be your Bakasura jungle guy. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to support the Twitchiest community. Thank you for supporting the Twitchiest community. If you'd like to see more videos, make sure you subscribe to the channel and always hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. Thank you for all your support and have a twitching day, y'all.